In April, interim results from the phase two trial of an investigational bacterial cell therapy developed by Protara Therapeutics showed promising durable responses in patients with high-risk, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Protara CEO Jesse Shefferman spoke with me about the treatment and about Protara's strategy for de-risked drug development. Non-muscle invasive bladder cancer is the sixth most prevalent cancer in the United States, and it's the fourth most prevalent among men. Um, and yet it has seen some of the, the, the very least amount of drug development. The 10-year survival uh, for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer patients is pretty good. What is perhaps more um, the focus of treatment is the prevention or the ad ad addressing recurrence. Non-muscle invasive cancer tends to be highly recurrent, but only a few cases uh, every year or, or a few thousand cases every year become locally advanced or metastatic. But when it does go metastatic, it is, it is highly lethal. And mm. so you really want to avoid that. Yeah, what do you see as um, what's missing from the current treatment landscape? What are the, the unmet needs there? Yeah, so I think there is a kind of sacrosanct, absolute first-line therapy, which is the BCG vaccine. It's estimated that approximately 35 to 50% of all patients who, you know, for whom BCG works at first, they will develop, um, you know, sort of tolerance to or be refractory to BCG treatment. And the only, and you know, once you've become refractory to the standard of care, you know, if you still, you know, have contained your NMIVC in the bladder itself, the very the very obvious choice for many, many patients for many years was radical cystectomy, mm. um, which is a brutal, brutal um way to sort of, you know, um continue on in life, um, as you can imagine. What's new um, in the landscape is the FDA um, recognizing that there's barely enough in the frontline setting for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer patients with just you know BCG and, and sort of generic chemotherapeutics administered locally. Um, you know, for patients who are refractory to BCG, there's really nothing. So you're currently investigating the agent Tara002. Can you tell me a bit about what kind of treatment that is and what the mechanism of action is? So O2 is actually a bacterial therapeutic. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was originally developed in Japan in the 1970s as a means of reinvigorating the immune system following highly immunodepletive chemotherapeutic regimens. It was eventually approved in, in a number of solid tumors, including lung gastric, head, neck, and thyroid, cancerous ascites, and cancerous pleural effusion, um, and was given to thousands and thousands of patients um, mm. successfully. And so fast forward 40 years, 30 years, really, um, when we sort of caught wind of this interesting immune-based cancer treatment mm -hmm. with a big patient safety database, and pretty significant evidence of, of, of efficacy, you know, we, we asked ourselves if it could be reimagined in the world that we now exist in, especially related to immune uh, checkpoint inhibition and, and, and the utilization of immune therapies in cancer, mm -hmm. you could reimagine the entirety of this drug. The literature for years and years and years, based on the Japan experience, identified OK432 as a TLR4. Okay. Right, which is sort of a canonical pathway for recognition of pathogens. Except when we ran the modern assay to say, what is this exactly? We determined that, in fact, it isn't TLR4, but it's rather NOD2 TLR2. Um, and that's a really big difference. And, and it's an example of our goal to not look at this older product as just that, right? Like, but rather the science, the biology, the way mm -hmm. that we characterize activity or, or mechanism has evolved so much that we could go back to this thing and say, there's utility here. We've now treated well over 50 patients with this drug and we kind of are seeing clinical results that mm -hmm. bear out that original thesis that, th that this might be a really 
interesting immune therapy to bring into the non-muscle invasive bladder setting. Right now, our, our, our 12 month response rate, meaning non-recurrence rate in BCG refractory patients is 67%. So that yeah. means you know, two out of three patients, even after a year, we've been able to say you remain cancer free. And you would have probably been a candidate for cystectomy five years ago. That's that's wildly gratifying. Where do you see this fitting into the treatment landscape? How might physicians work it into their patient care? We've talked a lot about what else is in development or recently approved. A lot of targeted immunotherapies. And over here, sort of enhanced chemotherapeutics. But OO2, as a broad immunopotentiator, is unique in the field right now. And the more patients remain in the prevalence population and not going on to cystectomy, um, what we need to figure out is where will we be sequenced? Because what we know is that you know, most of the other investigational therapies out there are at about 50% complete response at 12 months, which means half of the patients will be ostensibly recurring and you know, almost certainly utilizing a different modality than what was previously used. This is a unique cancer in that it looks more like an indolent chronic disease. Mm -hmm. That then means that, you know, what is your economic burden on the practice? What is your burden on the flow of practice? Do you have to, uh, you know, undertake special handling? Um, you know, post-treatment, you know, does the patient have to, for instance, bleach their urine or go to the bathroom in a separate, you know, toilet? These are considerations that suddenly layer into what am I going to reach for first? Mm -hmm. As long as everything is sort of in the same zone of efficacy. Right. And the thing about OO2 that I think really helps it stand up is it takes 15 minutes to administer. There's no special handling. There is no special post administration protocol and go straight home. You know, these are all the sorts of things that all else held equal start to really impact the decision making of a, of a, of a physician when it's like, okay, what am I going to reach for first when mm -hmm. a patient walks through the door? That is something that where you're really addressing kind of the patient experience in a, in a meaningful way.